And he confessed to me, he was in his 60s, and that was almost 20 some years ago. He was in his 60s and we was moving furniture into the church and doing things, and he had to stop every two minutes because the stuff was heavy. He says, you know what? God called me a long time ago, but I didn't want to submit and surrender. And now I'm doing it, I'm, everything is so tiring and hard. My body, all this stuff, I just would have did it back when he told me to do it. I wouldn't be trying to, I mean, yeah, it would drive me crazy because y'all know me, I work out and whatnot, and he was every two minutes, okay, put it down, put it down, put it down. I need a break, I need a break. And he confessed to me, and I thank that because he confirmed, helped me understand who I was and why I was even there. He said, if I were to submit it and did what God called me to do so long, this would not be hard. The way of a transgressor is hard. He was transgressing God while going to church, paying tithes, shouting and singing because he had not submitted and was doing what God had called him to do. And we don't look at it like that. We think because we ain't doing what God calls to do, the world, okay. No, you're not. There's a purpose. Verse 18 in chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. But now have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as, as it hath pleased him. Remember I used to go to a church, it was like 30 drummers. Everybody was in line to play drums. And then I would go visit the churches and they didn't have no drummers. And I'm thinking like, we everybody waiting to play drums at this one church instead of going and, and using their gift where they, they need to be used. Made no sense. It says, but God has set in the set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? Where were the body? That's what it says. W-H-E-R W-E-R-E I understand it. Verse 20, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. But now <clears throat> are they many members, yet but one body. So even as we grow, we still say, that's why I don't understand uh, beloved Bishop Jordan is about to celebrate 43 years of ministry. And for the life of me, I don't understand why people don't come and give him his flowers. I, 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 I think, I, I don't think, I don't know if he's 90 or 89, I, I forgot his age, but the fact of the matter is he's about to celebrate 43 years of faithful opening them church doors on 1634 East Main Street. I don't understand. And we're going to do an outreach on um, the, the 6th, a week before the celebration, which is the 713. But I don't, I don't understand all these people that came through there and he's helped spiritually by being used by God while people will not give people their flowers. This, that's a huge problem in a body family. You got the audacity to try and come to somebody go stare at them in a box in there as a stiff thinking you're doing something. This man is about to celebrate 43 years. That's almost my entire life of being faithful, with, and I know what it takes. I've been that person. We had a church on three sides of town that I, I had, to, had, had the keys to, had to make sure bills was paid, and, and you hear about all these people falling and all this negative stuff, and people quick to jump on the bandwagon and talk about, how about the people who's being faithful? Use some of that energy to go bless them. And I've been, I've been texting people and, and telling, hey man, at least stop by, shake his hand, tell him you love him. But now there are many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more, those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And I can attest to that because the scriptures is used our natural body to, 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 to explain the spiritual. Excuse me. Because I remember stubbing my pinky toe and thinking it wasn't no big deal. Somehow that pain went from my pinky toe up my leg to my back. So, so something that seemed so small ended up affecting my whole body and everything I had to do. So I gained a whole new respect for the smaller parts of my body. Meaning they need the same care as all the rest of the body. Verses 23, and those members of the body which we think to be less honorable upon these, we bestow more abundant honor and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. And I, I hear the Holy Spirit speaking concerning that, 
that I remember people was like, how many members you got in your church? What's that got to do with the price of tea in China? The fact that we doing the work to, to, to get us as much honor as somebody who has the anointing and the, 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 the gift to preach to thousands upon thousands. We are not the world. We are in this world, but we're not of this world. People, how many members you got in your church? What's that got to do with anything? I might be preaching to the person that might be on their way to shoot you and your kids. If that's the only member I got in my, 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 my fellowship, I believe that's pretty important to you. See, we don't look at things the way God looks at things. Everybody can't be mega, thank God, with all the stuff that's going on in mega right now. But everybody ain't called to be that. And I've never look, looked at myself differently because I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't have thousands. Because God's using me to do what he's called me to do, and I don't want you to do, do, do it either. Some people uh, uh, I know for a fact are hesitant at starting ministry because they're worried about support. Let me help you understand something. If God be for you, he's more than the world. That's all you need. Can't nobody come against your work. Can't nobody come against what God called you to do. Bible says be faithful for a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Some, they, see, you, you, you look at that, all that other stuff. Ain't got nothing to do with what God has called you to do. 24. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together having given more abundant honor to the part which lacketh. You hear that? More honor to the part that lacketh. Verse 25 in chapter 12, 1 Corinthians, that there should be no schisms in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. The Bible says it in two places that I know for a fact that God is not a respecter of persons. I was dealing with some folks here in Florida and because I don't have the same kind of money and credit and drive the fancy cars they do, they started, I discerned that they started looking at me a little differently. And I asked God, I said, how would you, how, how would you, how do you want me to handle this? Because number one, I have the Holy Ghost and a lot of them did not. And I, and I had heard the scripture, it says, what, what they have done to the least of them, they have done to me. But he gave me the diff a different interpretation for that for that situation. He says, you thought that the least meant that because you didn't have the same amount of money that they do, that you're least. He says, you're not the least, and you need to repent because they are least because they don't have the Holy Ghost. And so I had to repent. I said, Lord, I, 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 wasn't looking, I was looking at the natural aspect. I wasn't looking at the spiritual. He says, they need the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost, so you're not the least. <laughs> And he had to correct me on that, and I was corrected. So we need to understand that the Bible says that he's not a respecter of persons. People down here trying to build up themselves and build up their resume and do all these things and look good before men. You better make sure you look right, look good before God. Because at the end of the day, anybody that truly has the gift of the Holy Ghost would never exchange it for anything in this world. Not one single solitary thing. And that's what David says. Don't take your spirit from me. He knew he could not live and he didn't even have the indwelling. The Bible, it came upon him. He says, you, you, you can have anything you want. Take this kingdom, Bathsheba, who I've been killed for. My, my, don't take your spirit. I can't live without the spirit of the living God being in me, through me, around me, on me. I, I, I don't know how I lasted without it. I have no idea how I was even able to tie my shoes without the Holy Ghost. And the more I met, the more I allowed to cultivate, and the more I submit, and the more I yield, the more I give over into it. I'm like, how did I ever exist in this life and in this world without the gift? And that that's 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 my issue with it, is that when the church presents the gift, they only make it about speaking in tongues, and that's just the evidence of the gift. That's not the gift. That's one of the gifts which we read. 26. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all members rejoice with it. That's why I was saying about this rejoicing 43 years. We should all be rejoicing. The churches across the street, the churches down the street, 
All people that have been through there. I hit this one sister up. She said, I don't even live in Columbus no more. And I was like, well, let me send you the cash app so you can bless the man of God. Ain't no excuse, family. They know us by the love we have one to another. Why y'all think I sell $5 t-shirts? Why y'all why think I sell two for five? You don't think my shirts can sell for more than that? I'm trying to be a blessing. I'm trying to make sure everybody can afford to be a blessing. And I'm trying to be obedient. 27, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians. Now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. Do you need me to read that again? Now, ye are the body of Christ. Stop repping church buildings, church names, and definitely pastors. I used to DJ gospel skate. I was the longest tenure gospel skate DJ from 1998 to 2015 when I moved to, to West Virginia and Florida. Nobody else DJ gospel skate longer than me consecutively. Nobody. And I thank God for that because I love being faithful. But one of my big pet peeves there was we had people coming from different churches. And they all, I go to so-and-so church and I go to so-and-so church. I'm like, bro, this is gospel skate. This is <laughs> one Lord, one faith, one baptism. We don't rep no, we don't rep no sets here. I don't care, I don't care where you go. I will honor your pastor if he come, you know, I, I, I give honor where honor is due. But as far as that goes, we don't rep no sets. This is this is a multi uh, whatever fellowship. We get people from everywhere out. That's why I loved it. Cause people from different fellowships came and it wasn't about nobody. It was the body of Christ just out there just fellowshipping and worshiping God together. I loved that. And that was the only thing I ever experienced consecutively like that all the time. Cause generally when you go to one church, that's what you that's what they talk about. The, their church, their address, what they doing. And I understand it to a certain extent. But you got to understand something. This scripture says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. 28. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers. Now I love the teachers are third. Because Hosea, Hosea 4 and 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So teachers, he said, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, the gifts of healings, helps governments, diversities of tongues. Talking about the gifts. Are all apostles, are all prophets, question mark, are all teachers, or all workers of miracles? Verse 30. Have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Now that that's a, has a question mark right there. Do you all speak with tongues? Since tongues is the evidence of the Holy Ghost, that's a good question. Because it's asking, saying, in other words, they don't. That's, that's really what the scripture is saying. Do all speak with tongues? Now, let me help you understand something. The evidence of the Holy Spirit is given by speaking in tongues from your belly shall fall rivers of living water. But for people to consent, I know people who have the Holy Ghost, but you rarely ever hear them speak in tongues. Whether they just don't do it in the public or just don't only did it when they received the Holy Spirit. That, that's a thing that people could attempt to debate, but the, I hear the Holy Spirit help me understand that we talked about how the scripture had, this is their diversity of tongues, and it's a gift also. To me, it's another language. Because what happened the day at Pentecost when they was in one place on one accord he says, are all these men, get, well, why do we hear them speaking in their native tongue? So it's a language as well. And I honestly believe, and I, I can give you scripture to back up what I'm saying, that as you mature and pray in the Holy Ghost, it will, it will be another language, literally. I know people who speak eloquently, and it literally sounds like they're speaking a, a, another language. That's why we, we can't make this thing a mystery. We can't be afraid of the power of Almighty God or else we would never experience it. Are all workers of miracles? Verse 30. Have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? No. 31. But covet earnestly the best gifts. Now, that, that, that works well with singers. You ain't, gonna, you ain't gotta tell a singer who can sing the same. You ain't gotta tell a rapper who can rap to rap. You ain't got to tell a drummer who can drum to drum. 
They covet their best gifts. But I don't know why all these other ones that we just read about, why they struggle with, 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 with their gifts in the body of Christ. And I honestly believe that people are quick to show off those other gifts because it glorifies man more so than God sometimes. Not with everybody. I've known some anointed organ players who are so humble and meek. And I was like, man, you make that thing get up and walk. You could tell they're anointed. And they ain't, they ain't worried about putting out no CDs and telling people how good and great they are. And doing. The, they just want to bless the Lord with the gift that he gave them. And, I, and I've been in churches <clears throat> as a kid where there was a lady that was so anointed to sing that Sony used to send A&R people and put them in an audience to try to get her to come and sing for the world. And she wouldn't do it. She says, nope, I only sing for the Lord. They tried to offer her all kinds of contracts and, and monies and things, and she's like, not interested. I was so blessed by that, and I thank God he allowed me to experience that, that, that devout woman of God rejecting money and fame to keep her gift in the kingdom. And that's why when she sang, it shut the church down. Yokes was being destroyed, but people was being broken. People just, just couldn't help but uh, the, the power of the living God was almost more than, than the preaching word that came because when she sang, it was just truly from her heart. I love when I see the gifts of Almighty God in operation through people. I love it because you it's literally seeing the power of God move in the midst in ways we're not used to because we don't give ourselves time to. It says, but covered earnestly the best gifts and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So we just talked about the gift. I will say to you since we just finished observing 50 days from Passover, the actual day of Pentecost from 11th to 13th. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, you should want it beyond any shadow of any every doubt. Don't make it spooky. Don't make it something strange. It's a gift. I shared earlier, if somebody, if you found yourself in need of some money and somebody reached there in a while to give you some money, you would just open up your hand and receive it. That's how it is with receiving the Holy Spirit. And I've been blessed to be, help people receive the gift. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing, and, and, and the power is just, un I can't even explain it. It's, it's just unexplainable, and, and, it, and once you mature in it and grow in it, I mean, the Bible just, you be reading the Bible totally different. You will see things you've never saw before. You experience things, and most of all, you will understand the, the gift that God has specifically given you to operate in the body of Jesus Christ. Now, I love the scripture where apostles Paul said, I, I become all things to all men that I may win some. God, God had cross-trained me. I got trained traditional as well as, you know, street ministry as most people know me as. And I had no idea. I was just willing to do whatever. When God saved me, I owed, I, I owed and owe him everything forever. There's no expiration date on the, the, my, what I owe him. I owe him everything, and I try my best to give him everything, every single day. And I hear people talking about, it don't take all that and, and all that. Well, maybe not for you, but I understand what Jesus truly did for me, and I can't do enough for him. And we all fall short of his glory. We all do. There's not a person, that human being that walked the face of this earth that don't fall short of giving God his glory. That's just the nature of who we are. But when you recognize it and realize it, uh, shake yourself. Don't stay down. Don't allow this world to dictate your God to you. Do what he's called and created you to do. He said, I hear in the Holy Ghost, greater works than these. Greater works. We have greater works to do, family. And to my, to my peers in my age bracket, I'm 55 now, people who's 50 plus, Stop letting people push you into the casket. Stop letting people tell you you old. I see that happening well, too many times. Well, I might as well, no, <laughs> come on, man. 
Stop it. Stop. God is a spirit. It ain't gonna. I've been rebuking uh, old age and people think I color this. I don't color nothing. I've been rebuking gray and white hairs for a long time. A long time. I, I, I wish I would have had the Holy Ghost before I got bald because I would have kept that. But I didn't understand what the scripture says concerning no plague should come nigh my dwelling and my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. There was things, cause, and that's because I ran from God as a youngster. If I hadn't ran, and definitely if I were in a backslide, the devil wouldn't have stole stuff from me. Physically, spiritually, or naturally, or definitely financially. That's why the Bible says, discover the Lord in the days of thy youth. The, the sooner you start walking with Jesus, the more mature you'll be in the word, to operate in the word, to have the power of the word, to live the life that God has promised you. The devil can't take nothing from you. He, you have to give it to him. I know for a fact. So speak life to yourself. You have a gift. The gift is the Holy Ghost. Receive the gift. Because without receiving the gift, you won't understand your gift. You won't. I hate to be the bearer of good, good news, but until you understand that, you're not going to understand other things. And, and read about the, the, the disciples and the apostles who walked with Jesus before it was time for the gift to come. They were sitting here like, well, what is he talking about? Because they didn't have the spirit, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Peter got to dabble from time to time, and unfortunately, the one time when he dabbled, he says, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And then the next sentence, he had to rebuke Peter because Peter got in his flesh that quick. That's because there wasn't no indwelling yet. But that quick, he got in his flesh. And he said, no, no, we can't let you go. They're going to crucify me. He says, get behind me, Satan. So he went from being an attaboy to, <laughs> to getting rebuked. But it's different when you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will keep you if you want to be kept. In closing, I hear people say sometimes, I can't help it. The reason why you probably can't help it because you're not letting the Holy Ghost do it. The can't help us. You can get delivered from the can't help it. Trust me. I remember I used to use all kinds of excuses to do what my flesh wanted. I can't help it. Yes, you can, you can help it. And if you can't, let, let go and let God. It's not that hard. We make stuff hard. It is not hard, family. It really ain't. Like I said, the way of a transgressor is hard. Because a transgressor can't even comprehend the things of God and the power of God that, that is able to do more exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can imagine and or think. And I don't know about you, but I got a big imagination. And I think big. And I have to correct myself all the time with this false humility that tries to creep into me. It's like, Sean, I know you're trying to be humble. I know you're trying to be a good steward over the things that people send in. But look here, if God wants you to roll, you need to roll. And quit trying to be all, like I said, false sheep. It's, 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 it's what this walk is really about. As soon as you conquer one thing, here comes something else trying to, trying to creep in. But that's just this. It keeps you sharp. Keeps us praying. Keeps us fasting. Keeps us reading, preaching, and praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. We thank you for your word. because, And I thank you for this session that I'm calling Night Lives. I got maybe another week and a half where I'm going to be coming on here spontaneously as you give me a word in the morning. I study it and at night I present it. And I thank you for the people who understand the power of your word, how it can transform us and create us. We're that potter on that wheel going around and around. And you're taking stuff out that don't need to be in us and you're engrafting your word so that we can operate in the power you've given us. Speak those things that are not as though they are. In the name of Jesus, it's time for some folks to come off them jobs and start a full-time ministry. It's time for some folks to shake that, 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 that infirmer, infirmity spirit. I know people who have been asking me for prayer for probably 20 years for, for, for uh, sugar and different things. It's been gone. only reason you're still here is because you haven't rebuked it. It's not meant to kill you, but you sitting there playing with it. That's why you should never say, my sugar and my diabetes, it was never yours. We need to learn how to quit calling that nonsense. That's why people still got that stuff. If it was meant to kill you, you'd have been dead. Ain't nothing worse than somebody threatening to kill you for 20, 30 years, and you still say, like, get on with it. If it had the power to take you out, you'd have been gone. Stop saying it's yours and crucify that stuff. And I hear the Holy Spirit saying this. In order for that to happen, you're going to have to go cold turkey on them pills and that medication. 
Because you can't do both. You can't operate in faith and in fear. And before you say you can't do it, I will put somebody on this microphone right now that can testify that they ain't taking them pills since, since they gave them to them. Because they decided I'm not going to live my life being a pill popper for this nonsense. And they said if I, don't if I don't take it, I'm going to die. Too many saints do that. They take these things because the doctor says so, but Jesus ain't said you have to take nothing. Now, if you don't have the faith to understand, believe that, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. They keep getting the word and they keep getting built up to where they can go to church and crucify them things. Put them on an altar. So I'm not getting another refill. I'm done. I'm healed in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father God, that you've given us the power and the authority to tread on the serpent's head. Step on the devil. We claim complete healing, complete deliverance, the walking in authority in 2024. Pentecost in the Bible was the birth of the church because you gave the power of your Holy Spirit in dwelling. So it's time for the church to raise up and take back those things that were stolen in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this special high holy time that we just observed. And we just thank you for everything you've done and everything you're going to do. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. God bless you and may heaven's face continually and always smile upon you.